Welcome to a new episode of Coptic Civilization. I'm Michael Saad. Our episode today is on Neo-Coptic Art in Los Angeles. And our guest is Maggie Hernandez, who just completed and received her master's degree from Claremont Graduate University. And the title of her thesis uh, is Christian Orthodox Art Enters the Third Millennium Coptic Art History, Analysis, and Interpretation. Welcome to Logos TV, Maggie. Thank you very much, Michael. What draw you to the study of this topic, Coptic Art in, in Los Angeles, and producing such a lengthy and significant work, uh, your thesis, which I was honored to read it and so happy, has 230 pages one gigabyte <laughs> the electronic version what what um, draw you attracted you to this study well, a little bit of personal background helps in, um, help to bring me to the to the point in my life to study the subject i am a professional artist i am also uh, quite religious and and um, active in my own religion and the question that was often asked me as a professional artist is where do I get my ideas and what and is there a religious theme in my paintings and with that kind of question provoking me I uh, just examined the world around me and I uh, am also a student of history and philosophy and religion so when I encountered the um, Coptic program at Claremont Graduate University and particularly working with Gaudat Gabra it was a natural fit. It seemed a natural fit and a natural time for me to bring these, these, this um, academic curiosity about religious artwork, its history, its um, interpretation, how it is used as a, as a liturgical tool or just as a, as a tool of devotion, together with my own work as a professional artist. And um, I met Gaudat and uh, sat in on a couple of his classes, classes, and it felt like the right time and the right place to begin bringing these two separate interests together. So I focused on the Coptic Church and the iconography of the Coptic Church, principally because it, its history, it is a 6,000 year history. It reaches back into the history of pharaonic times, and there seems to be an unbroken um, arc of visual language and visual history that transcends all the epochs of time from the earliest pharaonic times all the way down to um, the third millennium, which is um, hence the title of my my thesis, and more so than um, any of the other Orthodox churches, the Coptic Church seemed to have this consistency, and, and you could you could uh, trace it back through time, back and forth through time. And I liked that very much as a means, as an academic tool, and as well as an artistic tool. So I began studying with uh, Gaudat Gabra, and with his help, and with the. Um, the help of uh, Tammy Snyder and Karen Torgerson, um, was able to create a program that studied religion, the study of religion, with art as my text, instead of, instead of the linguistic texts 
being the source of, of uh, subject and the source of the interpretation and study, it was the artwork, um, particularly the neocoptic style and the neocoptic artwork in Los Angeles, um, the work pioneered and begun by Dr. Fanus. Um, Professor Gabra pointed out that there is a gap in the study in documenting the history of the, the, the Coptic visual material culture as it was leaving Egypt, um, as people moved out of Egypt into the diaspora, um, there wasn't, the, um, there wasn't a, uh, anyone capturing and documenting um, the visual material culture or the iconography. And so that became my area of focus and to, to document particularly the work in Los Angeles. The work that Dr. Fanus did for the diocese in Los Angeles um, covers about a 20 to 25 year period of his career uh, and represents the largest collection of the work of Dr. Fanus um, anywhere. It, it's, he did work prior both in Egypt and in England and he's done some some work I believe in Toronto um, and then many private commissions but the largest collection of work by Dr. Fanus is in the Los Angeles Diocese and I documented the four churches that still have all of his icons and um, there on display and um, they are, if you could help me with this, Michael, so I remember them all, um, St. Peter and St. Paul in Santa Monica, uh, St. Mark, uh, Holy Virgin Mary, St. Peshoy, and uh, St. Minas out in Colton Riverside area. And uh, the Holy Virgin Mary Church in, uh, in, in Los Angeles as well. Yes. Right. The Holy, yeah. Right. The Holy Virgin um, Mary and St. Peshoy became the focus. Right. Um, I documented all of the churches, the artwork in them, and then the focus for the thesis um, was Holy Virgin Mary and St. Peshoy, where I um, kind of took an approach of if this were a, um, I'm documenting it as if it were a, a, a find in antiquity, where I have the floor plan, I've identified where each of the icons is located in the building and how a person would engage with each of the icons if they were to enter into the narthex and then proceed into the nave through um, and, and then through into the sanctuary. And my intent is now to do that with each of the other three churches in, um, in LA and just to do a, a site analysis um, where you could just by reading the analysis and having the images there, you would be able to uh, understand the experience of walking in the front door into the narthex, passing through into the nave, and, and as you encounter each of the icons, you're able to um, understand the experience of that particular building. Um, so that gave me a foundation for then looking at the analysis. Um, and how, and then studying and, and observing and researching how the icons function as a tool for people, um, not only for the theology, but as a, um, a tool for their culture and a tool for um, challenges that they're having dealing with the, the moving into the diaspora uh, or as a sociological text. Um, a sociological question. Um, if sorry, I may, uh, yes. Uh, sorry, if I may uh, uh, relate your uh, classes that you took at Claremont Graduate University uh, with Professor Gabra and others. Uh, if you like to uh, talk a little more about that and and uh, how the classes compared to the surveys. Uh, you conducted among the Copts of these four churches, how these uh, two aspects of academia and field work yeah. uh, were merging in, in your brain and on your thesis writing. So the, the coursework at Claremont Graduate University was focused mostly in antiquity 
or um, the history of early Christianity, the history of early Christianity in Egypt, um, up to and including the, um, uh, the Islamization of Egypt. So we looked at um, extensively the, the monasteries and the churches that were built in Old Cairo, and then the monasteries out in the desert, the Red Monastery, the White Monastery, the Monastery of St. Anthony and St. Paul out in the, um, near the Red Sea. So with Professor Gabra, we, we studied them as pieces of antiquity, um, as, uh, as an history, art history, and a religious history point of view. Uh, we looked at um, uh, took courses in the history of monasticism, and then, of course, courses in the text, the writings and sayings of the Desert Fathers and the Coptic New Testament, um, which included language courses in, in Coptic, learning the Coptic language. From that, that was a historical grounding for me then to begin the field research. Um, it gave me, this was the starting point. Um, so when I went out to do field research and to talk with Coptic um, people in the diaspora, I had a foundation of, of their cultural and religious history so that I could, of course, ask informed questions and, and look for ways to identify the bridge between um, the Coptic church, particularly the visual culture of the Coptic church in Egypt and how it was moving into the diaspora as more and more people are immigrating into places like Los Angeles or Australia, London or uh, Texas. And they're building up very tight-knit and well-founded communities in these, these areas outside of Egypt. How they were bringing their, their material culture, their theology, and their lifestyle with them with the icon and how the icons represented that. So that gave me a way to ask questions. Um, and I interviewed um, about 40 people. Um, my intent was to get a, a snapshot that across the, um, the demographics of, a, of the Coptic community. I interviewed um, by way of a Sunday school teacher. I had a, one of the Sunday school teachers go in and ask her Sunday school class, some 8 to 12 year olds, um, simple questions about the Coptic artwork, the icons that they liked or didn't like, and what and and why. I then interviewed some teenagers, um, both young men and young women, and then several adults from twenty young twenties um, on up to sixty or seventy years old. So I had about forty people, thirty five to forty people in all those age groups. and I had a, a basic questionnaire. I asked the same questions of each person so that I could create a, uh, a database to look at of how people were reacting to their artwork and how they were using it not only for their theology and their religious worship but as an anchor for uh, I am a Copt. I'm here in Los Angeles but I am an Egyptian and I am my this icon helps me deal with the 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 day-to-day -day struggles and ups and downs and trials of what it means to be an immigrant or the son or a or, or daughter of an immigrant and and to interface with from a, a Middle Eastern culture into a very secular Western culture and they're using the icons as an anchor in their life they, they could carry a uh, picture of an icon in their wallet or in their car um, or use it as a bookmark in their books and that through the course of their day um, I learned that having that visual reminder was just a little boost to help them through the ups and downs of, of just being a, a stranger in a strange place as they made as they turned Los Angeles from being a strange place into home um, and as, as Los Angeles be becomes home for more and more people they still have the identity and the connection with Egypt with the icon and particularly the style that Dr. Phineas created. Um, you you to, made me uh, actually appreciate more and more the wisdom of the 
leaders of these communities, the four churches and actually two more churches, so six in total yeah. in Los Angeles area, the wisdom of the, the priests in particular who invited Isaac Fanous to come from Egypt, I remember in the early 1990s, to, to paint and write icons uh, on the walls of uh, these six churches. Yes, it, and, it is, and their wisdom it, was that this is an investment worthwhile that will be useful for generations to come uh, in, in, in many respects, as you mentioned, uh, uh, worship, uh, but also identity preservation. Yeah. Yes, it is. The work of Dr. Fenus, you have to think of it as a fulcrum, or it, it's the lens by which uh, the Coptic particularly the Coptic material culture and, this, and the ways that theology is expressed in the icon, the way that culture and social uh, ideas are expressed in the icon, they all pass through Dr. Fenus's work. Um, he is a, the pivot point between Egypt and the diaspora. And so he, his work is very interesting and he made a very conscious choices with the way that he developed his his style. I call it a visual grammar and a visual literacy. And if you were to compare Dr. Fanuc with a Byzantine or an uh, Italian or even the Armenian and Syriac style, there he kind of strips strips away those other influences and creates a unique definitive this is Egypt. This, this is an Egyptian saint, this is an Egyptian background, this is an Egyptian setting. Um, and he makes a readily identifiable Egypt, little piece of Egypt in each icon, which so, is not uh, typically uh, seen uh, in many of the others. Right. Yeah. Uh, you are saying, uh, I, to reinterpret what you said and also that where we started at the beginning of this, episode, you mentioned 6,000 years of yes. Coptic art, uh, considering the, Egypt, the ancient Egyptian roots. Uh, Coptic means Egyptian here in particular. Right. Uh, and uh, so Isaac Fanous, uh, in your opinion, to paraphrase what you, uh, you just said, or that what I understood, is that he recovered the, uh, or reconnected uh, the the authentically Egyptian art uh, in the 20th century with the previous millennia. He, he found a way to synthesize everything together. Uh -huh. um, if, if you could understand that, say, in the 4th or 6th century, representations of pharaonic art may have been, um, the Christian world may have not been very accepting because that represented uh, a history that was too close to them. It represented elements of, of um, Greco-Roman and pharaonic paganism that was a little too close to home in history. But for today, uh, for Isaac Fenus, there wasn't that burden of proximity. And so he could reach into pharaonic art and into the representations and say, yes, this is Egyptian. And it has a place in the iconography of the Coptic church as I, as an, as you said, as an, as an icon of identity. Um, so in most of, many of his, his uh, icons that have a landscape, there will be um, Egyptian architecture, buildings and structures and scenes, um, background scenes that are classic, would be a classically interpreted Egyptian desert scene or Egyptian um, a hip, um, style building. Um, for example, I often have seen the Temple of Hepshetut uh, um, stylized in the background of the, um, the flight to Egypt, in one of his icons of the flight to Egypt. So it sets it definitely in an, in an Egyptian setting with an Egyptian identity. And he was able to bring the, all these pieces together. Um, how much of it was an intentional and how much much of it was not, I don't know yet. I have to, would need more uh, time to research into his life specifically and his motivation specifically. But as a, a piece of art history, what he did is quite unique. 
and he did, it is a unique uh, style that's called the neo-coptic style that has moved outside of just a religious context and is now accepted in in the art community and the artistic world as this is this has a place it has its mark and he has made that mark I, uh, uh, independent of the church yeah i'm i'm glad to report that uh, uh, his icons are accessible one can purchase uh, varieties of icons and different sizes from uh, a website called theotokos.org mm -hmm. and that is run by the holy virgin mary in los angeles and i personally uh, bought it through the website and, and quite uh, pleased with the quality of service and quality of the product and uh, uh, i encourage all interested to to seek theotokos.org and uh, purchase but let me ask you maggie two questions to before we conclude mm -hmm. uh, one question is the disciples of isaac fanus i'm, I'm glad uh, many of them are around the world and in yes. egypt and in the diaspora and copts and non-copts and converts converts to Coptic uh, uh, faith. Uh, did you come across the, uh, any of them or, or relate their work to his work? Um, at this point in my research, I haven't begun bringing the, those threads of research together, but I um, had the opportunity to speak with Stefan René, who is one of Dr. Fernus's um, uh, principal protégés, his principal students and um, Afad Mahal, um, who is also in, um, so Stefan René is in, in London, and um, Fadi Mahal is also living in the United Kingdom. They, and um, they're locally in Los Angeles. Um, Gerges uh, Bakhtor, did I pronounce that correctly? Uh, Bakhtor, yes. Bakhtor. Yeah. Gerges Bakhtor helped Dr. Fanus, um, was his assistant, uh, with painting the icons of Holy Virgin and St. Pashoy, and you can see that he also signed um, the dome, um, his signatures there. There there are people in Cairo, there are um, icon iconographers in Australia, and um, there's a whole movement, like I said, of the Neo-Coptic style is not just a style for creating icons anymore. I um, have seen um, contemporary and secular images and imagery that is being rendered in this style. Um, that it's, it's made a transition out of being a, a form of iconography as a style into a form of treating other subjects, secular subjects, and, and um, outside of, of church, church use and church subjects and, and icons specifically. And that, from an art, purely art history point of view, um, is, is an interesting transition. Um, and it, I think it informs um, how important the work of Dr. Fanus is. Whether, there, I've met some people who don't care for his style, um, and there's a movement away in some, with some of the iconographers that are following him, which is the natural progression of art movements. But um, regardless, of where it goes from there, Dr. Fernus remains that, that pivot point that all Coptic iconography will have to pass through when you study the history of the, of the visual material culture of the Coptic Church. It passes through the work of Dr. Fernus. Uh, and his I'm, work... Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, God bless his soul, Dr. Fanus uh, departed in the year 2007. I'm sure he would be uh, delighted to hear what uh, you described him and his art and his dedication. And uh, by the way, I had the privilege of many, many uh, times uh, sitting and talking with him. And he is a, ver ver a pious person who would spend the time dedicated to prayer before and during uh, his writing or painting of the icons and of highest uh, moral uh, uh, regard and, and, and respect. 
and uh, a role model in, in, in many ways. God bless his soul. Yes, it, this did become his life's mission. Both, right. um, he didn't start the, start. Uh, it wasn't his intention, but uh, he was the one person in the right place at the right time to turn to, who had the skills and the ability, both the the art training as well as the theological training, and the icon writing training. That when work was needed and icons were needed in the diaspora, he was the one person in to turn to um, and as he moved into the, the work in the diaspora it takes on a different quality than some of that which I note in um, I have noted in Egypt uh, in that it's speaking to to the diaspora he created a, a visual language for the cops to feel at home they could come to services and come into the church and see the icons and feel at home. They had a home away from home, and that was an intentional part of his style um, and his purpose, which coincides with some of the uh, the things I learned in my interviews. I had opportunity to interview several the the priests at each of the locations I documented, and I also interviewed Bishop Serapion. And uh, Bishop Serapion said it was his intent. And he specifically asked Dr. Fanus for some of these subject matter in the icons to be um, treated in a way that helped people with the transition, the immigrant experience, that they could come to church and they could see um, uh, they could see a particular figure in the icon and say, "Oh, he had a hard time." Um, you would have somebody like um, Saint Verena. Well, she left her homeland to go give service. Uh, and, tra and travel throughout the known world at the time in the fourth century giving service. So here she is there as an example and people can see her and feel at home and relate to her experience as they um, are doing a similar life change, having to leave Egypt and move to a strange country. Um, and you, and those, that's just one example of um, Bishop Serapians had a mission for the icons yeah. and that he specifically asked Dr. Fanus to create an icon program that included these types of stories um, so that it would help ease the, the transition and the changes that people were experiencing as they moved from Egypt to Los Angeles. Thank you so much, uh, Maggie, for this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, review and, and analysis of Dr. Fanu's legacy and for this conversation on neo-Coptic sure. art in Los Angeles. Thank you very much, Michael. It was my pleasure and I appreciate all of your help. Uh, it's, it's, it's my turn. It's, it's my duty to thank you and I'm honored and pleased with this opportunity Thank uh, God for uh, letting us uh, meet in, in Claremont and uh, for the effort, the scientific effort and spiritual effort you put into this uh, research. And I look forward to reading it in a book format. And, uh, I, and I did enjoy so much listening to your papers and conferences. And again, I encourage you to publish your master thesis in, in some book format in, in, in the future. Thank you. I, I intend to. I'm working on it. Thank you, yes, Michael. Yes, yes. God bless you and reward you. Uh, our viewers, thank you for watching Logos TV, our program Coptic Civilization. I'm Michael Saad. See you, see you next week. Yeah.